Gray. Okay, welcome to the second tutorial on Podray. In this, I'm just going to try and show you how the 3D coordinate system works. I'm going to keep things fairly simple. Um, let's get started. Now, I've got here in the window all the code that we created during the first lesson, so everything here should be fairly familiar to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sphere and I'm going to copy all its details a number of times as part of the highlighting how the coordinates work. But to do that, I need to shrink the size of our sphere. Now, in the first lesson, it was size 2. What I'm going to do is shrink that down to half, so 0.5. So it's going to be a much smaller sphere. I'll just run that so you can see the difference. Yes, we want to save all our changes. And now you can see that in the rendering, the, pit, the sphere itself is a lot smaller. Next thing I want to do is, because I'm going to create a number of spheres, I'm just going to make things easier for me to, to copy and paste by putting everything onto one line, rather than having it on multiple lines as we did in the first lesson. So it doesn't matter how many lines you split an object's definition up over. As you can see here, it's now on one line instead of five or six. And it all runs just the same, which I'll run again. And there you go, you can see it's the same. Now, this sphere is centered on zero, zero, zero in all three coordinates, the X, the Y, and the Z. And I'm gonna make this into a special sphere because there's gonna be a number of them by making it the only green one. So I've changed its color from red to green. Let's run that. And now you can see that the sphere's gone green. Now I said in the first video that um, going from left to right, numbers in the X coordinate get higher. So let's prove that. So I'm copying that line, pasting it here. So I'm making a definition for a second sphere. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the x coordinate by 1. So now this is at x1, y0, z0. And I'm also going to make the colour red so that you can see it's a different sphere. I run it. And now we have two spheres. We've got two definitions for different spheres. One red, one green. And you can see both of them on the screen. Let's do that again just to make it a little more extreme. So I've cut and paste it again, and let's increase that x to 2, and I'll run it. And so you can see as we add more spheres in, and we increase the value of x, we get more spheres to the right. But what about if we go the other way? What if we have negative numbers on the x coordinate? Well, I'll copy both of these lines now, put that in. So instead of 1, I'll make this minus 1 and minus 2, which should be going the other way. So I'll change the colour from red to blue on these negative x value spheres. And we'll run that. So you now you can see that the blue ones are to the left, the red ones to the right. And that's because of the negative and positive values of the x coordinate. Right, you can go as well as going left and right, you can also go up and down. So I'm going to copy these two spheres here and make two new spheres. Let me just reset the x coordinate back to zero, which puts them in the center of the screen. But I'm going to change the y coordinate to positive numbers, one and two. So I'm creating two spheres, the first one at a height of one and the second with a height of two. And I'll make these yellow. And let's run that picture. So now you can see that we've got spheres going upwards, 1 and 2. Of course, as well as going positive for the y value, we can go negative. So I'll do that next. So I'll change this y so we get one immediately below our green sphere and another one immediately below that. And I'll make these white. So these should appear below the green sphere. There you go. So we've done left and right, we've done up and down. There's forwards and backwards as well. So what I'm going to do is copy these two lines of code again. 
I'm going to leave the height at zero, so I'm going to put that back to zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put negative numbers in for the z value. So two spheres again, so one at minus one and minus two. Now because the camera is currently set to minus ten, putting a sphere at minus one and minus two actually brings them closer to the camera. All right, I need to give these a different colour so that you can see what I'm getting at. So I'm just going to pick in another colour, grey 50. There are a lot of colour definitions in the Colours Ink file and a number of grey gradients. So this is the 50th one. So let me run that. OK, so you're looking at the picture that's been rendered and you can only see one grey ball. That's because although we've defined two, one of them is behind the other one. It's obscured by the nearer of the two balls. You can't actually see it. So what we need to do is move the camera so that you can see those two spheres. So first of all, I'm going to increase the position of the Y coordinate for the camera. That will move the camera upwards relative to the baseline. So I'll add two to that and run the picture again. So you can just about see the two grey spheres now, one nestling and hiding behind the other. Just to make things a little clearer on the picture, I'm going to increase the X coordinate by two as well. This will push the camera over to the right, so we'll get a sort of diagonal view of this little shape we've created. And there you go, you can now see those two grey balls a little clearer. And you can see how all three coordinates are lining up. Now as well, as well as pulling the Z coordinate back towards the camera in this case, you can also push it away into the distance. So now Z gets higher as it goes further away from you. So I'll change, get rid of the minus one and leave it as one. And get rid of the minus two and make it two. And we'll make these a wonderful cyan color. Now the theory is these two balls should be disappearing off into the distance. There you go, they are disappearing off into the distance. You can just see them there behind the green one, getting slightly smaller as they go further away. Now, I've only showed you coordinates going from zero up to two. These numbers are actually infinite and they can be as detailed as you like. So instead of just saying two, you could say 2.00094 You can get really long, complicated numbers. When I'm designing my SDL, I generally try to keep whole numbers because that's easier for me to keep in my head and something you might want to try. Now, to show you how things disappear into the distance, I'm just going to increase the value of this last sphere from two to four, which puts the furthest away sphere even further away from the camera. So let me press run. You see, you can see a bit more of that sphere now. So now I'm going to push it a little bit further. Let me push it all the way up to a value of 10. So that's way off into the distance now. There you go. And you can see it looks significantly smaller because it's that much further from the camera. Let's go a little, little bit further. Let's double the distance from 10 to 20. And there you go. You can see it getting smaller and smaller as it disappears into the distance. The same thing happens if you push things to the left, to the right, or up or down. They will disappear. In this case, if I don't move the camera, if I move things upwards, they'll disappear out of sight. Um, let me show you that. So we've got the top sphere in yellow. Let's make that three and move that a bit more upwards. There you go, it's disappearing upwards. Let's change it to four. And run it again, a bit higher. Change it to five. And there, you can see it disappearing off. And you can manipulate all these coordinates in any way you want. We can even move something. So our green sphere, which is at 0, 0, 0, let's just change its position. So I'm going to move it to the right one. I'm going to move it up one. And I'm going to move it one into the distance. And there you go. You can see the green sphere is no longer in the middle of that little structure. It's pushed further away, like the cyan ball. It's pushed up, like the yellow one. And it's pushed to the right, like the red one. There you go, hopefully that's made, made things clearer as to how the coordinate system works.